it's Teresa. Welcome to my channel. I'm going to make a rosary today. I have never made a rosary. <laughs> I, I'm not Catholic. I don't really know much at all about rosaries, but I had a lady request that I make one. So I tried to research and educate myself on how they're constructed. I have some six millimeter, just white glass pearl beads here. I have 14 pieces of half inch chain. And for the chain I'm using, that came to uh, six little links. So I've got 14 of those. And I've got my little uh, crucifix and my little connector. I'm, I bought this crucifix from Amazon. I'm kind of uh, disappointed that it's not double sided. Of course, it didn't say that it was double sided and, sided, and I didn't think anything about it. Uh, but I would rather it have been double sided, but it'll work. Uh, I have my cutters that I use to cut craft wire and uh, head pins and that kind of thing. Uh, they're Zeron. I have my round nose pliers that I got from BB Craft. I have my bent chain nose pliers that I got from BB Craft. My tweezer pliers that are Zeron. And my chain nose pliers that I've had forever and I don't know where I got them. <laughs> and I have my little New Orleans shot glass to put my wires that I cut up in. He's going to get a lot of use today. <laughs> Uh, I have some pieces of 20 gauge uh, German style wire. I know I usually use 22 gauge, but since I'm going to be doing simple loops, I wanted to use a little bit heavier gauge than what I usually use. Uh, I've got, I'm not going to use this, but I'm going to show you how it's used. I've got the one step looper here. Uh, this one is the 2.25 millimeter. It makes a 2.25 millimeter loop. I think they have one that makes a smaller loop and then one that makes a bigger loop. I don't use it very much. Uh, I just, prefer to do them myself but if you're doing a lot of them and th I mean this comes in really handy if you have to do a lot of them and I have 59 of these little pearls here uh, her concern was that she said she was having trouble getting her decades to be even to be the same length and from what I understand a decade is a beaded chain of 10 beads and then they're separated by other beads and it would be hard to get them the same because I think they're supposed to be put together with simple loops and that would mean getting the loop on each side of every bead the same and that's not easy uh, you can try to do it with eye pins but like I've said before it's almost impossible to get your loop on this side of the bead the same as the loop that already came on the eye pin uh, you can, if you use the one-step looper, in case you don't have never seen it used, you just put your bead on here, and it's got a it's got a hole on this side there, and you take your put your bead on, and you put your pin through there or your wire, whatever you're using, and put it up against the one-step looper, and then you squeeze the handle. You still have to cock it back some because it's not going to be that way when you take it off the looper if you don't. And then your your little, it, it does that. And your little loop is not completely closed. You can come in with your chain nose pliers and close the loop the rest of the way, but it's not going to be the same as the loop on the bottom there. And there's a little bit of space there. It doesn't, it doesn't make the loop right up against the bead. It leaves a little bit of space there. And, and it moves back and forth. If, if that doesn't bother you, you can use the one-step looper and that final course you can take uh, so you could take these are really hard eye pins. They're the ones I got at Walmart. <laughs> I'm still using. Uh, you could take an eye pin and Cut the cut the loop that's already on it off, and you could just put that through your one step looper without any beads on it. Just stick it through there, and you could squeeze and make your first side of your loop, and then cock it back as you before you take it off the 
tool. I think I cocked that one back too much. <laughs> but then you and then you could go in here and close up your loop. And then you put your bead on. And then just do the same thing on the other side. Put it through the hole. I don't think mine's going to go through the hole. I don't think it's long enough. There we go. And then just squeeze on this, squeeze on this side and try to cock it back before you take it off. And then go in there with your round nose pliers, close up your loop. And then you do have the same loop on each side. So, it, but there is still a little room there where the bead, bead moves back and forth. But that, you know, if you're going to make a whole lot of them like this, and there's 59 beads here, so that's a lot of beads to make light loops. Uh, if you want to do that, and if that little space going back th and forth there doesn't bother you, that would be a really good way to do it. But I just prefer to do them myself. And I'm going to try to show you a different way than the way I usually show you to make simple loops today that I think you know, when I make a simple loop with an eye pen like you've seen me do before I don't get them all the same it, I don't think it's possible since you already have one side of the eye pen already made the loop is already made on one side of the eye pen so I'm gonna do a way that I think is makes more consistent loops on each side of the beads using this 20 gauge German style wire so let me get settled here and <laughs> I'll be back. I've got one of my decades made here, and from what I understand, I think there are different types of rosaries, but I think the most common one has five decades. So I'm going to make four more of these. I've got some of my little pearls already done here, and I'm going to show you how I do this without using an eye pen. Uh, I'm going to make sure that I have a nice flush cut here at the end. And these are like three and a half inch pieces of wire. I found that I can get about three of the beads done with this. I've seen people who make their own eye pins out of wire. I start with maybe like a 10 inch piece and make a whole bunch of them, but I'm not that good. I can't use that much. So this is about all I can do. And I've found that this doesn't waste hardly as much. So I'm gonna go, I'm gonna put my round nose pliers. I'm gonna go real close to the end because I don't want much of it. I don't want a big loop because these beads are small. And I'm going to make sure there's no wire sticking out. And I'm just going to roll the loop. And I know most of the time you see me roll the loops toward me. I'm rolling this against me. It doesn't matter. You can do whichever way you want. And I'm going to roll the loop until it touches the wire. And this is just the way I do it. This is the way I found works best for me. There are probably other ways to do it. I don't know. I just This is how I figured out how to do it. I'm going to take my... Bent chain those pliers. I'm going to hold my loop really tight because if you don't, it'll slip. And then I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to go in here and I'm going to bend this wire back until the loop is centered over the wire. So I have a little eye pin there. Now I'm going to take my bead and put it on here. And I'm going to do like I always do when I'm making a simple loop. I'm going to straighten this up a little. It's not straight. Now I'm going to, I'm just going to bend my wire over the top of the bead. Now normally I would cut off and leave about a fourth of an inch here and roll back my loop, but I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it differently. I'm going to put my round nose pliers in here as though I was making a wrap loop, but I'm not going to make a wrap loop. And I can't get it right in under there because I bent my wire right over the bead, so there's no room to get it right up and under there. So I just have to get it as close as I can, touching the bead as close as I can. So now I'm going to uh, bend my wire back like I do when we're making a wrap loop. Round nose pliers are facing me until it hits the bead. I'm going to rotate the round nose pliers until they're facing the table. Hold really tight. I'm going to take this side and pull it up and under the pliers until it hits the pliers. Can't go any further. I'm going to cock it back and I'm going to have to do it a lot because I couldn't get right under there. So it's, it's going it, to, this, this part's going to end up sticking straight up. So I'm going to just keep cocking it back until it's centered over the bead. 
and now I'm going to go in here with my flush cutters with the flush side this way like this and I'm going to cut as close as I can to where those wires meet and you're going to have a little hook on the end of your wire that you'll have to cut off when you go to make your next one and now I'm going to take them around those pliers and I'm going to go in here and I'm just going to close up my loop and now I'm going to take because these almost never turn out to be that's facing the same way I'm just going to just do that to get them facing the same way so that's what I've got there it's probably not perfect but I don't think it's going to be perfect but I think that's pretty close to the same loop on each side I don't think, think they're still not straight so huh. so now I'm going to take the rest of my wire and I'm going to cut my little hook off here and have a really good flush cut there at the end and I'm going to take my around those pliers I'm going to go real close to the end because I don't want much of a loop very big loop and I'm going to roll the loop I'm going to take my chain, uh, bent chain those pliers and I'm going to hold my loop, hold it really tight because it'll slip. And I, I know that not everybody has those little tweezer pliers that you don't have to have them. I just like to use them. I'm going to use the regular uh, chain those pliers for this. You can just, just bend it back until it's centered over the wire. And now I'm going to put my bead on. And I'm going to take my pliers and bend my wire over top of my bead. Put my round nose pliers under here. Try to put them about the same size as I did on the other side. About the same side as I did on the other side. I'm going to round those pliers facing me. I'm going to bend back my wire till it hits the bead. Rotate my pliers till they're facing the table. Hold them really tight. Bring this wire in under until it's hitting the bottom of the tool, can't go any further. Cock it back a lot until this wire is practically standing straight up to center it over the top of the bead. I don't know if that's centered. I don't think I did that enough. Okay, now I'm going to take my flush cutters with the flush side facing up like this and I'm going to go in there and cut as close to the where the wires meet as I can get. Now I'm going to take my round nose pliers and close up my loop. And then I'm going to take both pliers and straighten it up. Let's see what I've got there. So now I'm going to do it one more time. Okay, I'm going to take the rest of my little piece of wire here. I think I can get one more out of it. I'm going to cut off the little hook that I had left. I'm going to go to the end of my wire. Make sure there's nothing sticking out there. I'm going to roll the loop. Till it meets the wire. I'm going to take my bent chain those pliers and I'm going to hold it really tight. I'm going to take my pliers and I'm going to bend it straight back so it's centered over the bead or over the wire like that. And now I'm going to take a bead and I'm going to put it on here. I'm going to take my pliers, bend my wire over the bead. Take them around those pliers and put them in there. And I'm going to bend my wire back. Don't have much to work with this time. Rotate my pliers, bend the wire under, cock it back a lot.
like that. I'll straighten it up a little here. Take my cutters with the flush side here. I'll cut as close as I can to the inside of the loop there. I'll take my round nose pliers and close up my loop. And then I'm going to straighten them up. And that's what I've got. So I'm going to do that with all the rest of these 59 beads. And then I'll be back and we'll put it together. Okay, I've got all my little decades made here. And I think they're fairly the same length. And I've got three little beads here I'm going to hook together. And I've got six other beads that go between the decades and other places. And i got my chain and my crucifix and my connector. Uh, I got about halfway through this and I was seriously reconsidering why I didn't just use the one-step looper. <laughs> because this was a lot of work. 59 beads. But I didn't. I, went, I did it all by hand. So now I'm going to try to put it together. I've got my little diagram here on my phone up so that I won't mess up, hopefully. So I have to take three and hook them together. I'm just going to open my loop and put that one on and close my loop. And open this loop and put this one on and close this loop. Okay, so I got that. Now I take one of my decades and two of my pieces of chain and one of my beads that's all by theirself and I put the chain pieces on each side of these beads So I have a piece of chain, a bead, and a piece of chain. And it looks like I have to do that one, two, three, four, five more times. So that makes sense because I have five little beads left here. <laughs> so I'm going to do this four more times off camera and then okay. I'll be back. Now I've got all my decades here. I've got my six beads with chain on either side. I've got my three beads hooked together, and I've got two little pieces of chain here, my connector and my crucifix. And I've got some jump rings here. I forgot to say that at the beginning when I told you the supply list. So I take one of these, and I put one of these pieces of chain by themselves that I've got left here on it and then I take this end and I put one of these chain bead chain pieces here This is this textured chain that I got from Beadbox Bargains. I really like it. It's really pretty, but it has some pretty small links. Okay, there, finally. <laughs> 
close that back up. And then I connect another decade to the other side of this chain. sure to get these little links closed up well okay now I take this decade and attach it to my chain bead chain then I take another one of my decades Attach it to the other side. And then attach one of my chain bead chains. To this side and then attach my next one to this side. attach this side to another one of my chain bead chain take my last decade and attach it to this side And then take this side of my last decade and my last piece of chain attach it to that chain Okay, now so this is what I got so far. So now I need to take a jump ring and open it up. And attach this side of my chain and this side of my 
connector. And then take a jump ring. Attach this side of this chain and this side of my connector. And then take one of my chain bead chain pieces and a jump ring. And attach it to the bottom of my connector with the chain bead chain piece. And then take my three here, three beads here that I hooked together, and just open the link on them, one of them, and attach it to this chain. And then take the other side and open it up and attach it to my last chain bead chain. And then take a jump ring attach it to the bottom of this chain Make sure I get this crucifix on here facing the right way since it's not double sided. Chain thread on my crucifix. And there I go, I think I'm done. So, I've got the front part with the crucifix and this is called a uh, an our father bead I think if I'm saying this right this is and these are called the three called Hail Mary beads and this is another our father bead and then there's the connector which I think I might have that backwards so I don't yeah I think I've got that backwards I need to switch that around no oh, it's gonna oh yeah I guess I better turn this around. Don't want it to be backwards. Thought I did. Thought I was watching and got it on there right, but apparently I was didn't. Okay, so there we go. We got our crucifix, an Our Father bead, three Hail Mary beads, an Our Father bead our connector, and then the decades, I think the decades are 10 Hail Mary beads each, and then the beads in between are our father beads, I believe. I don't know for sure. Like I said, I don't know much about rosaries. <laughs> I hope I got this right. So let me see if I can get it all together in a pick, in a on here so you can see it all. Okay, so that's the whole thing all laid out and done. Uh, I hope it helps the lady that asked me about it. I hope I did it right. 
Uh, it's very long, very pretty. Uh, I, I'd never made a rosary for before. This is a first for me. Uh, I hope you all enjoyed this video. As usual, thank you all so much for joining me today. I really appreciate those of you who have subscribed to my channel and watched my videos and liked my videos and commented. Uh, I have a website where I sell my jewelry. It's Teresa's Handmade Jewelry, and I'll put a link to it in the description box below in case you're interested, along with a link to my Facebook and Instagram and my email. If you haven't, I'd really love it if you'd subscribe and hit the notification bell so you're notified when I upload a new video. So until next time, I hope you all have a great day. Take care. Thank you.